Oh my God, I made this cake, you guys. It's like a giant chocolate ganache and it's so good. This is my Instagram. Um, I'll see you there, guys. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, we are again in a totally different filming setup and I have to say guys, it's my favorite one yet. I found this absolute masterpiece on Facebook Marketplace. Can you believe it? It is a record player. You can't fully see it. Hang on, let me get myself out of the way. It's a vintage. It's a vintage record player from the 70s. This bit here pops up and you can play a record. You guys probably aren't even interested in that at all, but me, I love music and I love anything vintage or retro or 70s. So when I saw that and I knew I was looking to make like a new background for my filming setup, because honestly guys, my filming setups for the last year just have not been doing it for me. Like I have felt so uninspired in my workspace and being a creative human being, I need to feel kind of inspired to be able to create. Anyway, this is not what this video is about and I am totally procrastinating getting to the point, which is that I am pregnant. <laughs> I am up the duff with baby number two. I am about four months pregnant and I don't know the gender yet, but I will find out. I'm gonna do the NIPT test. Um, I don't wanna get too many scans this time. I remember when I was pregnant with Axel, I kind of just did everything they told me to do, which you tend to do when you're a first time mom and you don't really have a clue what you're doing and you just kind of want someone to point you in the right direction and be like, this is what you do. And so I just did everything that I was told to do when I was pregnant with my first son, Axel, who is almost three. But this time I'm like, I'm going to research everything. I'm going to stand in my power as a woman and I'm going to do what feels right for me. Because if you guys have watched my birth story with Axel, um, it's on YouTube. It definitely didn't go how I was hoping, which happens a lot. And obviously the most important thing is, is that at the end of it, you have a healthy baby and a healthy mom and you're both alive. But this time I'm like, I want to research everything. I want to know what my options are. I'm not gonna just like agree to everything without kind of like weighing up my options. Do you know what I mean? So this time I've had one scan just to confirm to myself that yes, there is a baby in there. I'm not totally imagining it. So I had a scan two, no, I had a scan last week. What am I talking about? So the scan was great. We saw the little fellow or female waving and moving around loads and Axel was there and he was like, it's a baby, I think it's ready to come out. And I'm like, it's not ready to come out yet, buddy. So that was so nice. And the strange thing is for me, when I was pregnant with Axel, like, like I said, I had like loads of scans because it's just the done thing. And this is gonna make me sound really awful, but I didn't really bond with what I was seeing on the screen. And I, you know how people like talk about when they're pregnant and they can feel the baby kicking and they see the baby on the scan. They have this like ultimate love and like bond. I didn't really feel that. I, it just felt so surreal to me. Like I knew I was pregnant. I knew there was a baby in there because I could see it on the screen. I could feel it moving around, but I just, it just seemed very unreal to me because I'd never been a mom before. But after having my baby after being a mum to Axel and seeing the result of pregnancy, it, it just is so much more real for me this time. And it doesn't feel as surreal and it doesn't feel as like dreamlike. And so when I saw the baby on the screen, I was like, oh my God, it's a little baby. And I just feel so bonded and protective of this little baby in my belly. Where was I going with that? I can't even remember like what I came on here to say apart from that I'm pregnant. Oh yeah, so I'm in Australia now. So this baby will be born in Australia. And I will be going to try for a VBAC, which is a vaginal birth after cesarean. So if you guys haven't watched my birth story with my son, Axel, that ended in an emergency C-section. I do have my doubts as to whether it actually was an emergency or whether I was just taking too long to progress because I was induced with him. And you know, when you get induced, it's meant to be like way more painful. And then you have this cascade of interventions that's kind of what happened with my labor with Axel. And he was a big baby. He was just over nine pounds. And I'm not a very big person. I'm five foot four and I'm pretty petite. But Axel, well, my partner, his dad, Axel's dad, who is my partner, is not a petite human. He's huge. So I guess this next baby is going to be pretty big as well. Guys, tell me, is this true or is this a myth? Is it true that your second baby will pretty much always be bigger than your first baby? Because... If that is indeed true, 
I don't know if I actually could birth a baby that is bigger than nine pounds. I don't know if my foof is big enough to allow for that to happen. So anyway, like I was saying, I will be trying to go for a V-back. I really don't want to have another cesarean section. I know apparently if it's a plan C-section, it's like a lot more relaxed and like could actually be enjoyable. So many people have told me that, but I just don't bloody believe it. I hated the C-section I had with Axel. I was sure I was going to have a heart attack and die. It took me so long to get over it. I was in so much pain. I couldn't lift my baby. Like having him on my belly to breastfeed was so painful because obviously you've just been bloody well sliced open like three different layers. I really want to avoid a C-section this time. So what I'm planning to do, and please guys, if you have any experience in this, tell me your experience in the comment section down below. I want to hear it all, the good, the bad, ugly. I'm not one of those pregnant people that you can't tell the truth to. I want to hear it all because I like to prepare myself. So this time, this is my plan. Tell me what you think. So basically I moved to Byron Bay in New South Wales, which tends to be like quite um, like a holistic kind of place to live. Like there's a lot of holistic centers around and stuff like that. And the local hospital has a birth center in it and it's kind of run by midwives. And I was like, oh my God, that sounds perfect. Like that's exactly what I want. And I called them And I was like, hi, I've just moved up here. Can I give birth with you guys? And they were so nice, but they were like, no. (laughs) No, sorry, you can't because I am considered high risk now because I've had a previous emergency C-section. So I can't give birth there. And I was like, oh. So my two other options are two hospitals that are about 45 minutes to an hour away which isn't exactly ideal because I really wanted to labor at home. I really want to labor at home as long as possible before going into hospital. I don't like the idea of driving like an hour whilst in active labor either because I remember being in active labor with Axel and it was bloody painful. That's my options like that. Well, I don't really have options. That's just, that's what I have to do. Aside from that, If I choose not to give birth in a hospital, I am legally allowed to have a home birth in Australia, even though it's a VBAC, but I would have to enlist a private midwife. And I really, really like the idea of that because I wouldn't have to, you know, send Axel off anywhere. I wouldn't have to get anyone to like fly up and look after him because I don't really have any friends really in this area yet because I've just moved here. And I don't know who would look after my son if if me and Darren had to go to hospital to give birth to this next baby. This is this video, I'm so sorry guys, it's becoming like an internal monologue of my thoughts, but it's been so long since I've made just a sit down chatty video with you guys. And honestly, I want your feedback. (laughs) I want your advice because I don't know what the heck I'm doing still. So yeah, that's my other option. I could have a private midwife and a home birth and attempt VBAC. And if it turns to shit, I guess I could get an ambulance to take me to the hospital an hour away. But since my previous experience ended in emergency C-section, I have kind of lost all faith in my female body to be able to birth my own children. And it makes me so sad because when I was pregnant with Axel, I had no fear going into ch- like going into childbirth, going into labor. I was like, it's going to be amazing. I've, I'm going to do hypnobirthing. I'm going to like open like a flower and my baby's just going to slide out and it's all going to be wonderful. And it didn't go like that. So obviously I was, I think I was like 42 weeks with him. He was really late. I had no signs at all that labor was imminent. Like my, my baby Axel was so happy in my womb. He had no intention of coming out anytime soon. So the hospital booked me in for an induction And then like the night before I was meant to go in, I was like, this doesn't feel right. I don't want to have an induction. And I called them and I was like, can I please cancel my induction? And the midwife on the phone to me was so rude actually. And she was like, no, you can't. That's not the way things are done around here. (laughs) I was like, okay. (laughs) So I dutifully went in for my induction, got induced. And then, like I said, if you guys want to watch the birth story, I go into probably too much detail actually in that video. But yeah, I've basically lost all faith in my body's ability to actually birth my own children. Like I just don't understand how it physiologically can work. I don't know, like, do I just make babies that are too big for my body? Am I just shit at childbirth? I don't, I don't know if I could cope with a home birth because like I said as well, I'm also a really anxious, worried person and I'm likely to get myself into a panic during a home birth, totally freak out, pass out, I don't know, have a heart attack or something like that. And I could just see it going awfully wrong. So it probably is better that I just go to the hospital from the get-go, but I just really don't want to have another C-section. I really want to have a vaginal birth for a multitude of reasons. The C-section terrified the heck out of me. I didn't like the recovery. 
I don't like that it affects the microbiome of the baby because obviously if you have a vaginal birth, your baby is going through your foof and they're getting like all your microbiome, all your good and bad bacteria from the birth canal. And it's going into their eyes and their ears and their mouth. And it's basically um, colonizing your baby's gut with a good microbiome. And when you have a C-section, your baby doesn't actually get that microbiome. So they get the microbiome of the hospital, which isn't ideal. And I've been working on my son Axel's microbiome since he was born, like actively trying to get him to have a good microbiome because it's so important for your gut health. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. But yeah, there's a lot of reasons I really don't want to have another C-section. Like nobody will be able to convince me that a C-section is right for me. Like it's just not what I want. <laughs> Obviously, if it has to happen and I, for whatever reason, can't get this next baby out, then so be it. But I'd really, really like to aim for a VBAC. So you guys, if you have any experience in that, please tell me in the comments down below. I don't care if you write me an essay, I will read them all. And yeah, I suppose I will show you my bump. I actually think my bump is huge for how far along I am. I kind of got a bump like almost, nah, not from right from the get go. I'm totally exaggerating there, but I've had a bump for about a month now. And I remember being pregnant with Axel at about like, I don't know, like 20 weeks pregnant and my bump was this size. So my bump is definitely way bigger this time around. And I actually genuinely thought I might be pregnant with twins because my bump happened so much faster and so much bigger this time around. I was like, oh my gosh, what if I'm having twins? So yeah, guys, that is my little life update. We have moved once again and I don't intend on moving anytime again soon because quite frankly, we are all sick of moving by now. We've moved from Ireland to Spain, back to Ireland, then from Ireland to Australia, then <laughs> 10 hours from where I live in Australia up to where we are now and I'm over it and I don't fancy moving again for a long, long time. Tell me what you think of my new background. Do you like my vintage record player? Tell me your birth stories below and um, that's about it. I love your guts, guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.